Okay, so let's try it if I don't, um, because I heard you, Marty, you were like, you're touching something after you go live. Yes, I'm touching tag friends. And so maybe, maybe that's why it's shutting off my sound. So I won't tag you, which is unfortunate because it's so great to tag you guys in these so you know I'm here. I'm here at 11 a.m. every day, by the way. So let me know if you can hear me. <clears throat> We're just going to test this, apparently. Okay, so you can hear me now. So Marty, you're right. What I did, what I've been doing is I hit the tag option, and then I start tagging, and then as soon, it seems to be as soon as I'm done tagging, then it goes off the sound. So I'm going to start over. We're going to see if this works. Can you still hear me? As soon as... Um, the one minute mark happens. Can you let me know if you can still hear me? Um, Victoria, if you're here, can you let, just let, just keep letting me know that you can still hear me. Okay. So here's the story. <clears throat> the story is I was working on cruise ships and I was really, <clears throat> when I try to explain to people what I was doing on cruise ships, they're like, I don't get it. The level that I operated at was extraordinary from who I chose to be um, in my work ethic. I mean, I worked seven days a week, 10 months straight. Now I'm not saying you should have to do that or do that. And sometimes that is required. Thank you, Marty. Sometimes it is required that you actually work your freaking ass off, that you work so hard that you crawl into bed at night and your bones ache. And I worked like this on cruise ships. And I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, the four hour work week and life gets to be easy. And I read the Bible and in the Bible, it says that hard work pleases God. Okay. Hard work pleases God. And out of your blood and your sweat and your tears comes extraordinary lessons about number one, who you are and how you show up in this world and what you're capable of. So you're building your confidence that never can you waver from because you're the one who put in the work. Also, <clears throat> you're creating extraordinary results because when you are working and you are in it and you are sweating and you are crying and you are throwing things against the wall and you are failing and you are failing and you are failing again, guess what? You are learning. And somewhere along the lines, and you've heard me say this many, many times, our culture and our society has adopted this sense of entitlement, this sense of, oh, it's, it's just lazy, complacency, mediocrity. And, and quite frankly, it's not your fault. It's not our fault. This is how our government is breeding us so that they can just send a paycheck now and nobody wants to work. Do you know how hard it is to find people to work for me? And when they do come and work for me, I mean, we have lots of staff. My, my house is run by five staff members. I just had to fire three of them for just because they just don't want to work. They don't want to show up. They don't even want to be good, let alone great or extraordinary. So the point in me sharing this with you is, of course, for a notice moment, for you to pause and notice. And this is not a moment of shame. These notice moments are not about shame. These notice moments are about, wow. What kind of life do I want? Wow. And notice it's working in your life. Now, maybe you can honestly say, I'm showing up so powerfully in every area of my life. I'm working hard on my marriage. I'm working hard in my business. I'm working hard on being connected with my kids. And you're like, but I don't want to work hard. And so just notice that if it's in you to be like, I don't want to work hard. Ask yourself why. And what have you made this? is driving me crazy. This technology is driving me crazy. I'm so grateful for it and it's driving me crazy. So but what have you made up about the word hard, about hard work? You guys listen, life gets to be hard. If it's not hard, you will never be extraordinary. And so this is the message. You get to be extraordinary. And when I, when I first got off cruise ships, the reason why I started telling you the cruise ship story is because when I got off cruise ships, I truly had been conditioned for four years to be extraordinary, very rigorous with time. Because if you were ever late on a cruise ship, it was, it had, they had a zero tolerance for lateness, like zero tolerance. If you were late, you were fired. And so you had your ass to wherever you had to be five minutes early. Okay. So I was conditioned and trained to be like military style. Maybe some of you are familiar with this style, this militant Coast Guard international waters type of 
of time. Time is important. Be on time. Also, I worked 12, 14, 16 hour days sometimes. I had targets and goals of a quarter million every seven days. And the company that I work for, they held me to it. Oh my gosh, did they hold me accountable to it. And if I didn't hit those targets and goals, guess who didn't get paid? Guess who didn't make the cut? Guess who had risked being on the best ship? Getting, if you had three weeks that were bad in a row, you risked them taking your ship away from you and giving you a ship that was a, a, a worse performer. Okay, so my ass was on the line every single day. And I also took really good care of myself. I was going to the gym every day because, well, I was young and I wanted to look hot on cruise ships, just straight up, that's what it was. And also I knew that if I didn't go to the gym, I would go freaking crazy because of the amount of pressure and stress that was on me. But let me remind you that the most extraordinary, rare, exquisite gemstones in the world are not only super, super far down in the ground that it takes mega extraction to pull them out, but also once you find them, they don't even look like a gemstone. Diamonds, for example, they actually look like mud and then they look like a rock. And then if you once you keep buffy them, they start to shine, right? I don't know about you, but I love diamonds. I love them. <clears throat> you start to buff them, they shine, and then you have to cut them. And so I know you know this story. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you, because when I got off cruise ships and I don't know, I don't know, maybe you've seen amazing success in your life at some point, And then you stepped into another arena and you're like, this isn't how things are run. Nobody gets me. That's how I felt. I didn't know where to take my experience. I didn't know who to go to. And I'm like, on my resume, I'm saying to people, I'm like, I was responsible for $1 million a month in revenue on a cruise ship. They're like, oh, really? Wow. What did you do? I was an auctioneer. They're like, oh, well, I don't really know what to do with that skill. What do you do with auctioneering skills? I don't know. <laughs> right? And so what did I do? Instead of leaning in and pushing, I went and worked in a restaurant. But I decided that I was going to work in the most high-end restaurants and I was going to be around the most profound people making money because that's what I wanted. I always wanted to be rich, self-fulfilled rich, not just marrying somebody like I did who was rich, but actually like making my own money and, and being extraordinarily wealthy. I always had that vision. Okay. And I share this with you because when I was working in this restaurant, we read a book and the book was called from good to great. Maybe you've read this and actually I didn't even read the full thing. I skimmed through it, but the number one lesson that I learned when I even just started right when I saw the cover of this book, and the cover of this book said from good to great, which meant that I might only be good. And I thought about this, am I just good or am I great? And it made me ponder this question. And I thought with this